Hi, my name's Anne from Orchid Systems, and today I'm going to run through inter-entity transactions. One of the features of inter-entity transactions allows you to automate loan account entries or do reallocations between entities. An entity can be a company, a department, a fund, or a project, anything that you want to keep self-balancing. The due to and due from loan account entries between entities are automated. The entity is defined by a segment in the general ledger chart of accounts. Inter-entity transactions can work with multiple entities within one company database and or with multiple entities in multiple company databases. The loan account entries are generated at the general ledger level and therefore inter-entity transactions works across all sub-ledgers. When specifying the target entity, you can either choose an account that belongs to the target entity or an optional field that has been configured to the target entity. In this particular video, I'm going to run through specifying the target entity by choosing an account that belongs to the target entity. To demonstrate the automation of loan account entries, I'm going to use the following company structure. There are five separate company databases. Orc LTD has two entities, Entity 1 and Entity 6. Orc Inc. 2 has one entity, Entity 2. Orc Inc. 3 has one entity, Entity 3. And so on for Entities 4 and 5. The arrows indicate the loan account entries between entities. In Entity 1, we're going to record an AP invoice for office supplies, apportioning the invoice to both Entity 1 and Entity 2. In Orc LTD, in Accounts Payable, I have recorded an office supplies invoice for Vendor 1200 for the value of $4,500. By selecting a GL account which belongs to Entity 1, I have apportioned $1,500 to Entity 1, and by selecting an account which belongs to Entity 2, $3,000 has been apportioned to Entity 2. Using ORCID's document management link, I can drag and drop a scanned document to be filed away and associated with Vendor 1200, and in this case, Invoice 789. Posting in Accounts Payable, and going to General Ledger to view this transaction. After posting, we can see that this transaction has a credit to the AP control account of $4,500 and a debit to office supplies for Entity 1 of $1,500 and a debit to office supplies for Entity 2 of $3,000. Inter-entity transactions works at the general ledger level. The automatic loan account entries are generated at the time the source batch is posted. When I posted this batch, you could see it has automated the due to and due from loan account entries between Entity 1 and Entity 2. The loan account entries are indicated by the source code RY. Then recognizing that Entity 2 is an external database, it reverses the entries belonging to Entity 2 and transfers them to the external database. These journal entries are indicated by the source type IR. Opening Orking 2 and reviewing the general ledger batch that was created when the source batch was posted in Ork Limited, we see the debit to the office supplier's suspense account of $3,000 and the credit to the loan account with Entity 1. We also see and have can double click to open our source document that was dragged and dropped and associated with the transactions in Accounts Payable in Orc Limited. In the source company, you can use the inter-entity audit inquiry to keep track of the batches created in target companies. Filtering on the target organization ID or on the posting sequence or scrolling down the list, you can quickly find the transaction you're concerned with. In this case, we can see in Orking 2, we created a batch number 232 with one entry. A status of exported implies that the transaction was sent through to the target company correctly. If you filter on a status other than exported, you can see those transactions which are either still waiting to be processed or which have been, we've tried to process, but have been unable to go to the target company for some reason. In this case, account 9992 does not support the currency required. Once you have completed or fixed the error, which could be creating an account, enabling a currency on account, opening a fiscal period, then you can go to the periodic processing and reprocess the error entries.
You should keep an, uh, an eye on the order trail and filter for pending and error entries. Resolve the issue and reprocess through the periodic processing option. Depending on your transaction volumes, this should be done daily or weekly, but definitely monthly prior to month end. You can also use the inter-entity inquiry, the account balance inquiry, to track the loan accounts across multiple companies. When I click go or refresh, the, the balances were dynamically extracted from the target entities. As you can see, entity one and two are in balance. The loan accounts between entity one and three are not in balance, as are some of the other loan account entries here. This is possibly due to the fact that some of the batches are not posted in the target entities and or there might be errors in the transactions or batches that are being to be sent to the target entities. You define in the setup in the linked accounts which entities loan accounts should match. So here we have defined this loan account in Entity 2's books should match this loan account in Entities 1's books and it's through the linked accounts that inter-entity knows which accounts to display on the account balance inquiry. In summary, we have just seen inter-entity transactions automating loan account entries between two entities which are configured in two separate company databases, Entity 1 in ORC LTD and Entity 2 in ORC Inc. 2. Initially, we entered an AP invoice in Entity 1 for $4,500. Of this, $1,500 was allocated to Entity 1 and $3,000 to Entity 2. When this transaction was posted in the GL, Inter-Entity Transactions automatically created the required loan account entries, debit to Entity 1's loan account with Entity 2 and credit to Entity 2's loan account with Entity 1. Then, because Entity 2 was configured as an entity in an external company database, all entries for Entity 2 are reversed in the source company database. And finally, Inter-Entity Transactions raise the relevant entries in Entity 2, credit to the loan account with Entity 1, debit to office supplies. In ORC LTD, the accounts belonging to Entity 2 net out to zero. The setup required for the transaction we have just seen is best described by Inter-Entity Transactions Setup Visual Process Flow. On the source transaction, you can either indicate the target entity by using an account which includes the target entity or by using an optional field. In the example we have just done, we were using an account which included the target entity. That is, we selected the account number 6500-2 for office suppliers for entity 2 and 6500-1 for office suppliers for entity 1. We were therefore using this particular process flow setup route. Firstly, in General Ledger, you need to create the segment for your entity. In our case, we have chosen Segment 4 for Entity. After creating your segment, you need to create the segment values. In our setup, we have Entities 1 through 6. You also need to create the General Ledger loan accounts between the entities. And for all the subledgers where you're going to be recording transactions, which are going to be inter-entity related, you need to create the relevant source codes. You need to set up any security around the source ledgers as you normally would. And then in inter-entity transactions, on the Segments tab and the Setup Options on the Segments tab, you need to indicate which segment from your chart of accounts is the Entity segment. And on the Processing tab, you need to choose the options that you require. In our case, we turned on into Entity Transactions, and because we had entities in multiple databases, we allowed into Entity Database Processing. Because the home currency of all our databases is the same and we want to transfer exchange rates from the source to the target database, we turned on the Use Home Functional Currency option. And because we have multiple entities in multiple databases, we turned on Perform Auto Reversal. 
The other setup we needed to do was indicate the source code we wanted for the automation of the loan accounts, entries, and the source code we want to use for the reversals. Then we need to define the routes between all the valid entity pairs. For example, between entity 1 and entity 3, we define the due to loan account in one's books with 3 and the due from loan account in one's books with 3. This could have been the same account. It depends whether you want to show the asset and the liability in different parts in the balance sheet. And then for the other member of the pair, you need to define the due to and due from for those accounts as well. So in this case, due from one in three's books and due to one in three's books. We have seen an accounts payable invoice entered in entity one and a portion of the invoice being reallocated to entity two. When we did this reallocation, we selected Entity 2 by specifying the GL account that belongs to Entity 2, 6500-2. We have also seen the general ledger and inter entity transaction setup required for these AP reallocation examples across two companies. Please refer to our website, Orchid Systems, for further videos, product brochures, product downloads, sample data, etc., and to contact us. Thanks very much for watching this video on inter-entity transactions.